many professions already apply hypnosis in one way or another without even knowing that they use hypnosis. Let's take, for example, athletes who use visualization techniques or artists who go into a meditative state or trance state when they create their artwork and many other examples. Hypnosis can be used for performance management in fantastic ways. And that is what we are going to talk about in this episode of our mini-series on topics why people come to us. I'm Axel Hombach, hypnotist in Cologne, Germany and trainer for self-hypnosis. I'm here in London with Dr. John Butler, the director of the HDI, the Hypnotherapy Training International, one of the leading schools, if not the leading schools in modern analytical hypnosis. Hello, John. Hello, Axel. And hello to our listeners. So with your experience, you have probably have had a lot of clients coming to you to help them with their performance, whatever the field might be. May it be actors, may it be sports people, may it be business people and many other examples. So with your experience, how can we as hypnotists work with people to help them with their performance? Well, as you say, people tend to think of those major areas of, for example, athletics and sports, creative arts, the, we have acting and we've got musicians and people working in sculpture, maybe sculpting and so on. There are all those areas, of course, which are much less commonly thought of when people work, for example, to improve their performance academically, a student who wants to raise their grades, pass some difficult exams. A person may want to perform better in work as a salesman, as a manager, as some whatever role they may have in the company. In a sense, then, we're all performing or simply functioning in life. We want to function at the very best level, and we bring our mind into everything we do. So as a husband, a wife, a parent, and so on. Now, to keep it simple for the moment, when the person comes, let's say, they want to perform better as an actor or a sports person. And by the way, hypnotherapy is so well known for this, even though there are now many applications in sports performance of elements of hypnotherapy, but the word hypnosis is not attached to them. For example, probably mental training or mental coaching. A lot of what they do is the same thing, exactly, because hypnotherapy is a broad term, which will include all those things such as visualization, certain kinds of relaxation, getting in the flow, which is a form of trance, getting in the state. There's so much uh, there that really belongs to hypnotherapy and in the ancient philosophies. You think of yoga, Zen, being in the Zen state, and these flow states. They've been known for thousands of years, back to what one might call the early origins of hypnotherapy, early forms of hypnotherapy. Because people discover that a states of consciousness affects the body. Different states of consciousness invoke different mental attitudes and beliefs that make us more effective in doing things. person's motivation may be a key area for us to work on. That may mean overcoming certain negative beliefs about themselves that they don't deserve it, can't achieve it. So we may be hoping with that. So self-worth, self-love. We may be working with their mind to help them Really, in, in terms of the motives or motivation, what are the reasons, the value you have for achieving that goal? And then we will take those and add to them and build them up in the mind through programming so they're powerfully motivating. We look at the things that are, people are doing that are inhibiting themselves. Why do they choose to underachieve or fail? For example, why does the runner who runs and the test runs perfect scores is only the fourth in the, in the major in the, competition. In the major competition. Correct. We see that all the time. People limiting themselves, never believing they deserve that higher level of achievement to move into the next rank, the premier kind of league and so on. So we have a, a job to do with that, Axel. On the most simple level, often people think of it as learning to relax in the act of dynamic relaxation, which is usually what's required. And we say stress, which creates tension. 
is an enemy of performance because we need arousal, we need excitement. We can't avoid that, nor would we want to. That's the adrenaline and energy needed emotionally for a very strong, powerful switching on of our circuits to perform at a very effective level without the deleterious effects of a lot of stress hormones, which would be counterproductive, counter-efficiency. So we work with the client to get the maximum mind-body coordination, mind-body performance, and at the mental level, we must deal with the self-sabotage, as I've mentioned, learning about self-motivation that involves self-love. I deserve it. I can achieve it. Now, with that, there's also, within the mind, the need to program grit, persistence, that mindset, that mental toughness we talk about a lot, which is a necessary condition for a high level of achievement. Because the old saying, to double your success rate, you quadruple your failure rate. But you don't see it as failure. You're learning to see that as just the learning experience that you need, that you're going through with your present level of awareness. I'm going to learn. I'm going to get better and better. So we develop expectation of success. We develop the imagination, the visualizations that we need, the right programming, the words that are most effective to trigger optimum response of mind and body, to overcome fears, fear of success, fear of failure, or other fears, to open up the mind with all of its power to galvanize the body, to release the neurotransmitters, to activate more of the muscle fibers in the same way the little old lady lifting the truck, you know, in an emergency. We have resources, we have much more power than we think. And to be able to access that power of mind, which triggers power of body to maximize performance, that's what it's about. So a good hypnotherapist can help people greatly with that. A good hypnotherapist will see high level performers because they find out that this is a good person in the field of hypnotherapy. They've got a a reputation that's based on not just journalistic hype, but on real results. So when we talk about celebrities, these are people who have got public attention because of their performance, the high level performance in some area, be it sports, be it in music, be it in arts of some kind or in acting. So all good performers have learned that they are able to move the critical factor aside, program themselves. We teach them self-hypnosis, very powerful motivation and programming that's very powerful and very specific. We also have to work, as I say, with that self-sabotage. So we may end up doing a lot of work with regression to help people overcome the self-sabotage, the lack of self-belief. So we help them overcome deep negative fixed ideas that are impeding their performance. And limitations come in different ways, Axel. I mean, people believed you couldn't run faster than the four-minute mile. That's the, the old story we often hear. And when one person did it, then many did it within the next year or two, because that was a very fixed idea in the mind. And so, but other fixed ideas are very personal, self-defeating, and our clients, our performers, really do need to have a lot of motivation for that high performance, because you've got to apply yourself. You need a lot of discipline, which just means learning. And many people don't feel, oh, I can push myself through that beyond my comfort zone, particularly in modern day culture where there's a lot of distractions and escapism, avoidance. And so getting people past the procrastination, which is just avoidance, getting them to see the purpose, the value of what they're doing so they can identify its value to them. We talk about values, which are the value you put on things. How much do you want it? How much are you prepared to invest in them in the, towards the goal? If you only put 20% in, you're going to get the 20% out, as we often say how much you're prepared to give up of self-sabotaging, counterproductive behaviors. High level performance demands high levels of concentration, attention, self-development, knowing yourself. What you just mentioned as concentration and, and focus, is that what also is known as the zone? I was just going to come to that. Okay. Being in the zone or the flow. Now we can talk about that in a lot of detail. Are there different states involved and how much are they similar? Frankly, I personally believe they're very similar. And yes, there are different states of consciousness that one can access for performance, but they do tend to have that in common, that there's a level of what I would just simply call either waking hypnosis or trance hypnosis. Many great footballers say, when I 
got round those four top class defenders and scored a goal. It was like I was in a trance. I was watching myself do it. I was almost watching as if I was out of my body. But they're actually in a different state of consciousness. When you read the reports of high performers, you'll see over and over again that they're in particular kinds of very active dynamic trances or sometimes other form of detached trances, but they are out of their normal limited thinking. And hypnotherapy trains us to enter those states, to understand them and use them. Now, along with that, being in the right state of mind, the flow, that focused, relaxed concentration, powerful attention being paid to what you're doing, that draws you into the experience. So you're in this real flow, like the long distance runner in that zone. That's when mind and body are working at their optimum. And the brain state levels, different states of brain activity, they've been studied. And there are, there are ways we define flow. Csikszentmihalyi, the psychologist responsible for a lot of the literature in that field, a lot of the early research, but of course it goes back hundreds of years, thousands of years perhaps, he identified certain things about it, about levels of confidence and competence and expectation and so on. Motivation requires value and expectancy, motivating people to succeed, powerfully influencing, persuading them at the subconscious level. We have a great deal of programming ability here because those who understand the art, the practitioner themselves, give you the technical knowledge you need for expert technical development and precision. Then there's the expression. There's that the confidence. That's the power of your imagination, releasing your potential. That is so much a, a matter of self-empowerment, self-belief, and moving aside your old limiting and self-destructive tendencies. So we work in several main areas here with people to enhance their performance. And I would say that hypnotherapy is by far the most powerful form of sports psychology, performance psychology. Much of what's given out under those labels is really hypnotherapy. From your point of experience, would you say that for example, a business person who comes to you for performance uh, enhancement, whatever that might be in this case, and a sports person who comes to you for performance enhancement, do they differ a lot or are they very similar? I think in the core, they're very similar. They're very similar in terms of wanting it enough, believing it enough. For the example, technical details, of course, are different. Playing uh, golf is different to playing football. Of course. I didn't mean the details, of course, yeah. because everybody is different. and we, Every we, athlete is different even in their own field. Yeah, and one footballer is different to another footballer, of Absolutely. course. Absolutely. I was more uh, asking about the general approach to performance or the general aspect of performance and how far do they differ or are similar. For example, a business person, if he wants to be successful, has to be very competitive, as has to be a sports person. And most likely, if a artist, a sculptor or painter wants to be successful, they have to be very competitive too. Well, you have your competitors to deal with, and how you deal with that is important, and then competing with yourself to bring out your best. The very best athletes not only are aware that there's a competitor, but there's a drive within them to be better, to explore their limits, if there are limits, to push beyond any limits. So that's a, a very powerful state of mind, that they're not limited then by the competition only. They really well, are... Not, in not only world. the competition with the others, but the competition also with themselves. Yeah, to yeah. discover yourself, your full potential. To grow... To, beyond oneself. Yeah, to be constantly pushing oneself because you're not always, you know, right there and then competing with somebody else. But you're always pushing yourself in a very balanced, healthy way, of course. So you're self-aware in your training, you're programming the body to become healthier and fitter with hypnosis, improving your muscular coordination with, say, for a golfer or a basketball player, mind-body interactions, eye-hand coordination. You're programming many technical skills and the ability to be relaxed, so that you have the active dynamic relaxation of hypnosis in everyday life available to you. And you have that mindset, the winner's mindset, the success consciousness, which really doesn't know any defeat. It's constantly learning, 
I'm pushing forward. I'm breaking through fears, doubts, worries, self-sabotage, and that lack of self-belief, lack of self-love, which is at the core of most of this kind of issue. So clients, your performers, they might have had bad experience where something went wrong. You could be helping them overcome that, going through a, a lean phase, a dry phase, where they may be dipping and there may be problems in their personal life interfering with their performance on the football field. And so you're helping them with that too. So cleaning the baggage that in order that they can concentrate and focus. That in the moment, you're in the moment. Yeah. When you're playing at Wimbledon, you're fully there, in the present, fully immersed in what you're doing. And that's an art, a skill you learn. The hypnotic state teaches that a lot. To use the hypnotic language, we say, we put that structure of the mind we call the critical factor of the conscious mind to the side sufficiently so that the critical negative doubts are not coming in and we're in the moment, we're powerfully heading towards that goal, fully experiencing whatever it is you're doing. Your mind is immersed in what you're doing. If you're playing at Wimbledon, you're 100% in the activity. You're not playing 80% in it and thinking 20%. Oh, I hope I don't make a mistake and make a fool of myself in front of all those 30 million viewers or whatever it might be. You see, you're able to be completely immersed in it. And that's a skill that comes with hypnotherapy. The trance state teaches those things very powerfully. And when you watch a top athlete, if you look closely, you see they're in a trance-like state. That doesn't mean their eyes are glazed over. In fact, although sometimes, like the long distance runner, you can see in them that there's a certain rhythm to what they're doing that's kind of monotonous, it's cyclical, it's repetitive. And they do go into a form of that kind of trance. But in other ways, they're very differently in a trance. If you see a martial artist, uh, say a very effective swords person, a boxer, to move at the speed they do can only be done by not having your conscious mind getting in the way with its kind of cumbersome effort and maybe trying to think it out logically. It's effortless. A great guitarist in the flow of improvisation. It's coming from within. They are the music. They are the creative flow. So hypnotherapy opens the door to creativity, we always say. You open the door to the subconscious mind, which is where our creativity and power is. It's the majority of our brain. It's what regulates our body. What could be more sensible than to target that with programming? So for everyday life even, a student in school who finds the lessons boring, to program himself to find a way to make them more interesting or study it in a way outside of the school as well as what he's doing in school, so he keeps focus, he keeps concentration, and also maximizes success. Everything from persistence, which is always necessary for talent. Bruce Lee said, essentially, as he said, talent is often overemphasized because it's wonderful, it's necessary, and we all have talent to some extent. It's application, and that needs a lot of mental tweaking for some people. You often bring the example of the pianist who trains or plays who exercises eight hours a day yeah and if he doesn't exercise for one day he already hears that is that a slight is deterioration yeah and after yeah. three days of not practicing he knows his critiques well here that's not his normal state of performance and that's right and very soon the audience but if he leaves it more than three days they in their nervous system will not have got the top performance and they'll realize it's not as exciting or as good as it was before when he yeah. was practicing sufficiently. And so performance management with hypnosis also helps our clients to find the persistence for training. Absolutely. And not becoming bored by it. Yes. And in a culture nowadays where there's a lot of this the instant gratification. Is only how long? Low, well, God three knows. or two, four, three, four minutes. Mm, got it. As you yeah. say, paying attention, the focus, relax, concentration. That means you're able to really connect to what you're doing. It's like a form of um, mindfulness. Yes. A, to, well, of course, to, mindfulness is to use a modern word for yes, that. Yes. Well, there's mindfulness elements to it. There are many yeah. levels and forms of mindfulness, of course, and sometimes taught a bit superficially. But I would say, you, you know, people sometimes, say, sometimes talk about being in a, in a tunnel. 
so that you are tunnel vision. But that doesn't mean you're not aware. It's just that for the moment, the main focus of your awareness is so intensely that's that the flow what you're doing. or zone. Of course it is. Or tunnel. Yeah. As we are coming to an end already. Yes. How would you summarize that in, let's say, three to four to five sentences? Okay, well, expert performance requires a trance, be it a, a very different kind of trance than we might ex assume as in hypnotherapy with the eyes closed and so on. Okay, which involves the critical factor of the conscious mind moving aside, powerful programming, which means ideas that are about belief, success, pushing past our boundaries and achieving the goal that we really powerfully programmed into the mind, into the different levels of the mind, imagination, into the subconscious, and then having the persistence, the grit, that we will persist, and the belief that we can achieve it, that we deserve it. We often call that confidence, the belief we can do it. These are key aspects of the role hypnotherapy plays in performance enhancement. Thank you very much, John. Thank you. And there is one more episode left in our short series on topics why people come. Which episode are we closing Well, on just quickly looking with? at the list here, I think it's on stress management, stress and stress-related conditions. So with that said, I'm very excited to talk to you again about stress and related conditions. Thank you so much, John. Thank you, Axel, and to our listeners as usual. And to all of our listeners, we hope you have liked this episode. So please give us a like, a friendly comment, subscribe to our channels, and share this episode via email and on social media. And make sure to follow up with the next episodes. Please check out our home pages. You'll find them linked wherever you listen to or watch this episode. With that said, I'm Axel Hombach, online with Dr. John Butler. Have a great time. Until next time.